There have been a few improvements in my 2013 uh, related to tracks and specifically with the ability to uh, match the position um, of various clips when they're offset from one another. So we'll start by using this initial animation. So I've got my character kind of stepping into a jump, jumping up, and then landing, and then stepping out again. So what I want to do is actually blend in a either a run or a jog uh, to lead in and out of this animation. So I'm going to simply grab the highest level node here, and I'll go into my tracks editor, and I'll create an animation clip. Now we'll just call this my jump clip. And I'm going to basically pull out all the animation from the entire hierarchy. So I'll choose include hierarchy here. And I'm going to use the time range that exists within whatever animation I happen to be using. So now I'll say create. And that will basically go through that hierarchy, step through it, and generate a uh, clip. Now I can either access the clip by going into my uh, auto load selected characters. Or I can go into the character uh, pull down here and I can set that to my current character. So there's the clip that I just created. So this can be scaled or cycled uh, to change the timing or rate of the animation. Um, you can also go in and mute things. So right now it's playing and you can see here I can go in and I can mute that animation or turn that off. Again, I could do other kinds of just basic editing, but ultimately what I want to do is I want to go in here and blend this with another clip. So I've exported a similar clip, um, or rather a different clip from the same character, and I'm going to import that using import animation to characters. So I've created a couple of clips here. One uh, is the one I'm working with now, jog, but I'm jump, but I'm also going to bring in the jog clip. So I'll import that in, and that'll basically just slap that right at uh, on top of my other clip at the current time. So now you can see that this doesn't work at all because what I'm getting is double uh, transforms essentially. What I want to do is actually blend these two. So I actually want to have him go from the jog into the jump. So I'm going to pull the jump back a little bit, and we'll put one uh, on the top track and one on the bottom. So now when I scrub the timeline, you'll see that I have my jog, and you'll see that I have my jump. The problem, of course, is that you'll see here that if I play this back, the jog happens from the center of the viewport there, and then the jump happens at a completely different location behind the jog. So there's a couple of things I need to do. One is I want to see these relative to one another in a more visual way. So I'm actually going to go into my uh, layer view here, and I'm going to grab the skin skeleton or the bind skeleton, or any skeleton associated with a character for that matter. And I'm going to select the root of that, and under my Tracks Edit menu, I'm going to apply, actually can't quite see that, but I'll pull this up. I'm going to set that as my ghost um, root. And now I'm going to go in here and I'm going to figure out which node is actually transforming. If I play this back, you can see that it, this main body node is the one that's transforming. So I'm going to grab that and I'm going to apply that as my offset object. So now if I go in here and I right click on either of these clips, I can show or hide the ghost for each clip. So I'll grab each one of these and show and hide the ghost. So now you can see I have two ghosts representing my clips, but I have a lot of screen clutter. So I'm going to just to temporarily turn off my original skeleton. And for visual clarity, I'm going to go into the attribute editor and I'm just going to set a custom color for each one of these clips. So I'll set the first one to be kind of a yellow and then I'll set the second one to be kind of an orange so that we can kind of distinguish between them. So now what I can do is I can actually grab these either in the viewport and select them or I can actually grab them by selecting the clip in the tracks view. And I can actually take these and I can begin to move them around and or rotate them freely. And that changes the orientation and the uh, original placement of the clip. That's not what I want to do in this case, though, because I want to get a more accurate matching. So first of all, let's just offset these a bit. So let's see, I want to start with my, with my jog, which is this clip. So I'll go in and I'll grab the jog and I'll put the jog kind of behind the run or the jump rather and I'll take the jump and I'll put it kind of in front of the jog so now I've basically repositioned them so now I have the jog feeding into the jump but I don't really have a very good match so I could manually go in here and match these or another method I could use is I can use an auto clip matching tool that has been added so this basically allows you to essentially uh, use an automated method to match the end point of one clip to the beginning point of another clip, or vice versa. So I'm going to start just by resetting here, and I'll grab the first clip, and then 
match the second clip to it. I'll just simply apply, and that will automatically match initially based on essentially the center of the character. Now another thing that I can do, so you can actually see how those line up, another thing I can do is I can say, well, what I really want to do is I want to match based on a specific foot. So I can actually grab any controller on my object or a bone or something like that, and I can say I want to do an override match. So I'll match the left leg in this case, and now I'll apply that again, and now you'll see, oh, I have to select my clips, now you'll see that when I apply that, watch the left foot. Now the left foot is actually in alignment from one clip to the next, so I'm using that as the relative match point. So there's a couple of different options when it comes to matching. Next thing I want to do is actually finish this off and add a blend, because right now if I play this back, you can see he jogs and then he just kind of pops back into that uh, jump. So I have no transition there. So I basically just want to go in here and essentially create a blend between these. And as I create a blend, what that's going to do is it's going to give me a, an interpolation between those two. The problem now is that I've got a gap between the interpolation. If I play this back, and we can hide this window now, if I play this back, you can actually see here that I have a jog, and then he kind of goes backwards and blends into the jump. So this is a case of basically timing. So I want to go in here, and instead of having a gap between these, I actually want to go in and add a bit of overlap, and that will actually change the way that the blend happens. So now he's going to run, and now he's going to blend into the jump and I'm going to get a much more kind of natural looking transition. So I could fine tune this a little further. I have a few different options. One option is I could go in and I could change the, uh, the blend point, modify the blend point by actually going in and interactively moving the ghost, and that would actually allow me to change how and when that blend happens. Additionally, there is a, a weight value associated with that transition, and I can actually change the shape of that curve um, so that I could, for instance, create an ease in or an ease out, or I could create a linear blend and so on. But hopefully you get the basic idea of how that works and how those improvements uh, will allow you to essentially uh, match different clips more easily.